Hello, I'm Laura. I'm a librarian here in the Information Technology Department at Mercer County Library System. And today I'm going to be talking to you about our new way of searching our collections, which is called the EDS Search or EBSCO Discovery Service. This search is available on our main website, which is www.mcl.org. And you'll see the box right up front where we have this search area and we have the classic catalog search. The difference between the two searches, the main search will search the new product that we are offering, which is the EDS search, and the classic catalog search will take you into the catalog that we've had for a while. There's a separate video on how to search the catalog, so do look for that if you're interested in searching just the catalog. Um, for the EDS search, basically what EBSCO Discovery Service is, it will search not only our holdings in the library, our physical print books, but it will search all of our databases as well. So if you're looking for e even just magazine articles or if you're looking for academic journals, uh, this is your one-stop search area. So if you're doing research and you want to see a comprehensive uh, list of the items that are available in the library, both the items that are available in print and our electronic holdings in our databases, this is the search you want to use. You will get the same results in the classic catalog search, which I'll show you briefly, um, but also there's a different way these are displayed and a different way that you'll be able to access the information from our databases. So in the main search, you'll see you have an option to search for keywords, or you can do title or author. I'm going to do a keyword search for the U.S. Civil War. And when I click search, I'm going to have another box pop up, which is going to show me the search results. Now, I've already done the search, and I've logged into the service. You don't have to log into the service in order to see the search results, but if you do look at an item that's available as full print or full text, uh, because you want to print a copy of the article, you will have to log in. When you first come to the site, at the top there will be a little uh, tan box that will say log in because you're searching in guest mode. Uh, when you log in and click that, you'll want to put in your barcode number from the back of your library card. That's going to be a 14 digit number. You want to enter all the digits without any spaces. So I did a search for the U.S. Civil War and one of the reasons I wanted to do this search is because it shows you basically everything that's available in the EDS search for you. What we're going to see first is on the left, there's a way to refine the results. And on the right, you'll see our results list. So we've retrieved 1,497,842 resources pertaining to the U.S. Civil War. The first thing that comes up is going to be a suggested item uh, asking you if you'd like to narrow down. So there's an, a resource on 12 incredible facts about the U.S. Civil War. You'll notice the second thing, which has this light bulb icon and the orange background. Some topics, over 90,000 of them actually, in EDS have a start your research section. These are areas where there are select articles, which will give you an overview of the topic. And if I click on that, we'll see what one of these articles looks like. You do have, this is the HTML full text, so you can print it. You can also just read through and get the basics about the U.S. Civil War. There's also an audio version, so if you're dealing with a student who may have dyslexia and would do better listening to the uh, article as opposed to trying to read through it, you can go ahead and click the play button. Uh, also, for somebody who has visual difficulties, you could do that as well. You can also download the MP3 version. So if this is something that you can't spend time listening to or you're doing research for a student as a tutor or as a you know, special ed aide, you can indeed download the MP3 and play it back for your student at a later date. Uh, you do have the option between the American accent, the Australian accent, and the British accent. And as we go through, you'll see it gives you the key dates, a little abstract, also known as, um, so if there's alternative names for what you're looking at, and in this particular case we're talking about a war, so it's talking about the location, usually gives you lists of important topics, subjects, in this case we've got key figures. 
You also have a summary of the events that took place and relevant maps and a timeline. So you can see that the, uh, like I said, it's a comprehensive overview in one article. Um, and there are in here, like this seven days battles is a hot link. So you could go ahead and click that and get another search going on the seven days battle or Stonewall Jackson. That's also a hot link. Ulysses S. Grant is a hot link. So we could click on several topics within this article and do a sub-search. And at the end, there's always going to be a bibliography. It's going to tell you about where you can go for more research. And it will tell you also at the bottom a citation. So if you do need to use this as a source in your research, you can go ahead and see the citation at the bottom. Most of the items that are in here are things that have been uh, published previously in print. So do be aware that if you have restrictions on what kind of research uh, resources you can use and you have a limit on the electronic resources that you can use, these are available, as I mentioned, in print version and those citations are here as well. So in this particular case, uh, you're getting something from the Salem Press Encyclopedia and it was six pages in the print. If you want the full citation, I'm going to go all the way up to the top. And on the right hand side, you'll see there's different tools here, one of which is citation. The top tool here is Google Drive. So if you'd like to export this to your Google Drive, you can do that. You can also add to the folder. You'll see at the top, there's a folder. You also have the sign in option. We already signed in with our library card, but with EBSCO, you can create a user account as well. And as you're doing research, you can save things to your folder. If you're doing research right now and you don't want to create an account, stuff will stay in your folder and then you can print it all out at the same time or put it into a bibliography using any kind of bibliography source you have that you can export them to that. But if you do set up a free account, uh, when you come back, the items you've saved will be in your folder. So you can always go back to do your research or revise your research later. There's also a print option. And if you click on that, obviously you're going to print through the browser's print options. You can email the information to yourself. You can save it locally. So if you want to save this as a PDF, you can do that. And then as I mentioned earlier, there's a citation. When you click on that, it's going to give you the citation formatted in various bibliographic styles. So if you're doing APA, MLA, a whole host of other ones, Chicago, Harvard is in here. Um, now, so you can see there's a different lot of um, bibliographic options here. So you just basically have to cut and paste this into your bibliography. If you prefer to export, you can do the export as well. And you can do the export of the citations in different uh, formats, including RefWorks, EasyBib, and EndNote. You can also create notes if you're going to be saving this for yourself um, so that you can go back in your folder and find it. Okay, I'm going to go back by clicking the back button here. So I get back to my results. And what we'll see underneath of that is a list of resources that are available underneath of the overview article. And you'll see these are items that have come from our catalog. So this is telling us that the West Windsor branch owns this particular book and the call number and what its current status is. So whether it's checked in or checked out or it's on hold for somebody, uh, you could see that. If you click the retrieve catalog item, it's going to take you right into our catalog. And if you'd like to place a hold on it or whatnot, you can do that. Um, we also have the option to look at read-alikes from novelists. So if you're looking at a book that you've read before or you want similar books to this one, read-alikes from novelists will give you um, items that are similar. One thing you'll notice at the top is it does tell you some subject and genre and reading level information. So you're seeing this is a nonfiction item that is in a juvenile section. Uh, the other thing too you're going to see is sometimes you'll see popularity based basically based on how many people who are doing searches are looking at this particular resource. You can also click on the title and that will give you more detailed information about it. So if you're not sure if this is a particular book that you would be interested in, uh, you can go ahead and click on that and get the full bibliog bibliographic record. 
and you're going to see how many pages it is, what subject terms are in there. So this is Secrets of the Civil War, and it's all about spies and how they pertain to uh, fighting in the Civil War. So you'll also get a little summary, and you'll get full holdings. You'll also see anything that we would have here in terms of reviews, the similar books. This is where you're going to get that um, novelist read-alike. And if there's other items by this particular author, you'll see that as well. On the left, you'll see the full holdings information as well. And you'll have this option to see more copies, uh, which will just refer you back down to the location holdings underneath of the full bibliographic record. I'm going to go back to the results list. And I'll show you the third and fourth items here are items that have indeed come from a particular database. In this case, these have come from Master File Premier, which is an EBSCO database that we subscribe to. And it's going to tell you what particular um, magazine or periodical it came from. It will also tell you some general subject terms. Just like the books, if you would like to find out more information about this, you can go ahead and click on the Reaper Strikes which is the title of number three, and you're going to get a, an article at, similar to what we saw when we looked at the Civil War overview. Again, you can listen to it, and you have the same options in terms of the accents and to download it if you'd like to. Or you can just read through, and you'll see that these are hot links as well. Uh, so if you wanted to click on any of these hot links, you would be able to go and do another search for that particular uh, subject. In this particular case, we're looking at um, names that you would be able to search on. Now notice one thing, we're looking at the HTML, and you're going to see it says photo color, um, and it's indicating that there's a photograph that was in this original article, but it's not showing you the photograph. That's OK. Uh, what you want to do is on the left hand side here, where it says PDF full text, this will give you a rendering of the article as it appeared in print. So then you're going to be able to see the photographs as well. And what we're going to see here is 13 pages. And as we scroll through, you'll see if it's in color, black and white, illustrations, photographs, um, paintings, graphics all that kind of stuff. That's what is listed as photo only in the HTML version, but when you come over to the PDF version, you're going to see all of the items. Now, you have options here as well. You can read aloud and you can do some drawing tools if you're in um, Microsoft Edge, where you can use some highlighting and uh, you know if you wanted to mark up the article, you could do that as well. Those are part of the reader tools in Microsoft Edge. Uh, some add-ons are available for Chrome and Firefox that do the same thing, so feel free to go look for those as well. But those are good resources to have um, if you're interested, if you're doing research and you'd like to make notes on your electronic copies of your journal articles. Um, this is actually a magazine article. I'm going to go back to the results list. I'm going to show you how you can narrow the results that you've received in EDS. Basically, I can expand if I'd like to, or limit. My initial search returns full text and print. So basically I'm returning full text articles as well as print articles that the library owns in our collection. So that's why you're seeing things like these first two books that are owned by our Hickory Corner and West Windsor branches because we own those in print. The full text is returning full text only from our databases. If you'd like to see just the catalog, you can choose to see just the catalog. And peer-reviewed is going to give you peer-reviewed academic journals. These are fairly narrow, so what you're seeing, is, again, is full text and print is giving you the biggest selection out of this. What you can do is you can, if you don't want to, re, if you want to see just magazines, but you want more than just peer-reviewed academic journals, you have the option down here under source type to choose magazine versus an academic journal. Uh, reviews and news articles, and if I click show more, you'll see we have things like narrowed down to trade publications, primary source documents, ebooks, conference uh, presentations, maps, uh, non print dissertations. So there's a lot of stuff that you can choose from here. So basically, you can do a quick limit, 
and just get the peer-reviewed journals, or you can go into the resource type and go into a more expansive narrowing of the topics here. So magazines, basically, as I mentioned earlier, your popular magazines, such as this uh, one that was down here that we looked at, which was uh, America's Civil War and Civil War Times, which are two popular magazines. But if you wanted to do academic journals for uh, research, perhaps for high school or college, you could narrow down by that as well. I'm going to go ahead and click on academic journals just to show you how that updates. And you see in the parentheses it said 306,000. So keep in mind we had almost one and a half million articles returned to us. Narrowing it down to the academic journals narrows it down to 306,000. So basically now you're seeing more than just the full text. You're going to see in some cases citations as well that will show up. And if you want to take full text off in the limiter, you can go ahead and uncheck that. And you'll see this 306,000 is going to expand to 570,000. And these first few articles you're going to see, you're going to notice that there is no HTML or PDF version to link to. That's because these are just the citations in Master File Premiere. They don't actually have the full text available. The good thing is you can request this item through the Interlibrary Loan Department and if you click on this request this item through Interlibrary Loan it will take you right into the form where you can fill out the form and request this particular article. You would just have to include all this information in the citation when you do that. So that's one way to get more resources that could be available to you that we may not own in full text or subscribe to um, on our databases in full text. Okay, so the other thing you can do is uh, that I didn't mention earlier is there's a publication date range here as well, uh, and you can just narrow that down. So if you're only looking for stuff published in, let's say, the last uh, 30 or 40 years, you can go ahead and narrow that down. You can also type numbers in here as well, so you don't have to use the slider. And... You can see that most of the information that we were looking at, we had 550,000. We only reduced about 20,000. Uh, most people probably are going to be looking for research that's fairly recent, so might go with a 10-year span. And when we do that, we're going to see our results reduce even further up here from the 531. It goes to more than half. So you got two, you've gone from 541,000 to 260,000 quickly. Um, okay, so the other thing too is you can also narrow by subject. So if you're looking for a particular aspect of the U.S. Civil War, I'm going to click on show more and you'll get this pop-up box. So if you're just looking for a pure history article, there are 20,000 of them. But if you're looking at the human rights aspects of the Civil War, you would be narrowing it down to 6,722. So I mean there's other things in here such as the economy, um, terrorism. If you wanted to look for um, espionage again, that was one of the options that we had when we were looking at the spy article. Okay, you can also narrow down specifically by publication. Um, so there's different publications that you can look for. Uh, publisher, you can see what language things are published in. So if you're looking for an article about the U.S. Civil War in Portuguese, there are 349 academic articles about the American Civil War published in Portuguese. Um, you also have which geographic region the article originated from. Uh, so there are 766 um, articles that are Iraqi in origin. Um, and then you can also see the databases that we do subscribe to and you can turn some of those on and off. Now I mentioned earlier this is called the EBSCO Discovery Service. We do subscribe to a lot more um, databases than just EBSCO. And a couple of those you can see right here, such as the Gale eBooks. We do have most of the databases we subscribe to are indeed linked to this. So when you're searching, you're going to get most of the uh, articles that are available in either Gale or the Infobase or the EBSCO uh, databases, which are the main ones that we have subscriptions to. You'll also see some ProQuest stuff come up uh, in terms of the newspaper information as well. And so you'll see the different Article, or mag, uh, I'm sorry, different databases that we have available. Some of them are turned on and off. You can check a box that's empty to add it. So, like if you wanted to add this history reference ebook collection in the master file ebook, 
and update that, you'll get that included as well. Now, those may have been excluded because we had asked for peer reviewed academic journals, and the ebooks just are not something that was going to fall within those types of databases, I mean, within that search parameter. Uh, so you can always add those databases in. Now we've got over 2 million records uh, by doing that, though. So just be aware that increasing can sometimes give you a much larger uh, pool, but it may become a much more unmanageable pool. Okay, so that's basically how to search EDS. Just a couple of things to note here. Um, we do have links to our website and our social media platforms at the top, but there's also uh, links to other mag, uh, sorry, not magazines, but other uh, databases we have that don't really produce research articles, but they are ones that you could uh, definitely or should take a look at, uh, such as our Mango Language Learning, Novelist, Pronunciator for Language, Rosetta Stone. We do have the Weiss Financial Ratings and Brain Fuse, which is our newest edition, uh, which does uh, tutoring and job searching uh, assistance. We do actually have access to live tutors. So if you are looking at this particular database, the EDS database, because you're doing academic research and maybe you're kind of stuck and don't know where to turn when you uh, are trying to do your research paper, I would say feel free to jump over to BrainFuse and see if you can set up a tutoring session with one of the live tutors. They also have extensive knowledge base articles. So even if you just need some tips on how to do research more efficiently in a particular subject, I mean, we searched the American Civil War, so you could see if there's some information there on doing research in the history area. If not, you could find yourself a history tutor uh, through BrainFuse and do some online assistance. Uh, so that's basically how to use EDS, and uh, hopefully you will enjoy that. Um, I did mention earlier that there was a way to do the catalog search, the plain catalog search, so I'm going to go back to our website right now. And on the plain catalog search, which is the same search you've probably been using for years, I'm going to do the same search, the U.S. Civil War. And you'll see it opens up into the catalog that we're used to seeing. But one thing I wanted to point out to you is you're seeing the classic search results here. And you're seeing there's that spy book, The Secrets of the U.S. Civil War, um, that we had seen in the EDS search. And the same information is there. But there's new, now a new tab up here that says Academic Search. When you click on the Academic Search, you'll see that the same results we found in EDS are now being presented to you through our catalog. And so here's that Research Starter. Uh, so if you wanted to read that article, you could go ahead and click U.S. Civil War. And you would also see the listings the same way we had seen in the other display. Now, you can use either one of these searches. They're going to give you the same results. Uh, personally, for me, I like using the classic catalog if I'm just looking for books or DVDs or CDs because I want to read something or just, you know, take out a movie or something like that. But I would probably use the EDS search for things that wanted, were more of a research-oriented topic or if I wanted a broader type of uh, resources to pull from even for a popular topic you know maybe I was looking for some sort of information about pet care and wanted information about cats um, I would still search here if I wanted a book but I definitely would look into EDS as well and uh, see what's available there and of course the displays are different it's a much cleaner display in terms of seeing the resources available in our magazines and our academic resources in the EDS version but you're still going to see like I said those same results here so if you're finding that you're getting a lot of results using the classic catalog search, but you'd like the different display, you can always go back and get that EDS display. I did want to point out that on the right on this one, the search limit or the limit search results, those limiters we saw that are on the left hand side in EDS, they are available on the right hand side in the catalog as well. Uh, so that's one way to uh, search if you're just used to going to the catalog. Uh, but as you get used to using the EDS search on our main website, you know, by all means, you know, try to use that as well and see, uh, you know, if you can expand your resource options. Okay, thank you for listening. Bye.